少，因灵寻，卡耶伊拉灵，阿萨卡哈拉灵，扎卡拉灵，少因灵灵寻。Namaste. So, you've all seen unfold on this channel in the last few days the drama that uh, I'm very dissatisfied with the response to this work. And there are two kinds of gurus: Sat Guru and Upas Guru. And the Sat Guru is just blissed out. Huh? He's just in samadhi. He has no worries, no cares, no feelings of possessiveness. He doesn't make any conditions on anybody. He doesn't expect anything from anybody、uh, because he's in bliss. But does a Sat Guru make a good teacher? No. He shows an example, and that can help motivate us. But he's not giving any lessons. He doesn't care whether you become advanced or not. The upas guru does. The upas guru is all business. Do this, do that. Get up at this time in the morning. Then take a bath. Then do this. Then do that, and so on. Instructions. The upas guru cares. The upas guru wants to see you succeed, so he gives instructions. He chastises. He scolds you when you screw up. Why? Because he cares about your advancement. You know, it's like good cop, bad cop, right? The good cop comes in. You know, or actually, they start with the bad cop. The bad cop threatens you with all this stuff, right? And then after you're beat up, the the good cop comes in, gives you a cup of coffee and a cigarette. You know, you know the story. So it's like good guru, bad guru. <laughs> the sad guru is the good guru, the nice guy, right? And the the bad guru is the upas guru, who gives you all kinds of hell. <laughs> so. The problem these days is not only are there very, very few qualified gurus, there are even fewer qualified disciples. This age is characterized by a number of things: faithlessness, atheism, skepticism, nihilism. And when people are interested in spiritual life, they're interested in Uh, Sayuja Mukti, just disappearing into the oneness of it all. They don't understand. Sayuja Mukti is how the goddess gets rid of the demons, <laughs> the ones that didn't turn out right, that have to be recycled, scrapped completely. But the devotees, those who are more intelligent, more advanced. They get the higher kinds of mukti, the salokya, samipya, sarupa, and sarshti. Huh? They get those are the real liberations, because you get to keep.、Uh, I don't want to say individuality exactly, because that implies separateness. Yes, you become one with Brahman, but you don't lose your your agency. I think that's the best way to say it. And you have a role to play. You have a, a mission and a responsibility. And the thing is, your quality is exactly the same as Brahman. That's why you're liberated. That's why somebody can be a Jivan Mukta, someone who's liberated in this life, because their quality and their desire. Is identical with that of Brahman, both Nirguna Brahman, 
Sadashiva, and Saguna Brahman, or the mother Ambika. So we've been talking about the Matrika. Uh, the Matrika, mat, Ma means, of course, mother. Right? Tri means three. And Ka, as a suffix, means that which is not understood or realized. So the Matrika is the matrix of the Sanskrit alphabet, where each letter has a distinct meaning and a Shakti that can be invoked and used for any effect by chanting her mantra. And not only that, each of those Shaktis has a temple in Greater India, Bharat Varsha, where you can go and you can perform the appropriate rituals and so on to invoke her power. So I'm done with this trying to teach people who don't want to learn anything. I'm done with trying to give the secrets of spiritual life to people who don't appreciate them and who certainly don't practice them. So I'm taking off, I'm going on pilgrimage to these different temples. Here's a map. First around South India, kind of clockwise, over to Sri Lanka. And then later on next year, I'll be going up north, up to the UP and the Himalayas and like that. And eventually I'm gonna wind up somewhere completely different and spend the rest of my days in Samadhi. You see, the story is, uh, it's six minutes into the video now, so most of the, f the fools have tuned out. <laughs> and only the ones who understand my method of presentation have stayed. So the whole point of this is that back in 1984, the mother arose as Kundalini spontaneously without me doing anything. I was just sitting there watching. And she arose and opened the gate, huh? the thousand petal lotus, the gateway to the world of bliss. And that gate has, has remained open. I can access it anytime I want. Huh? These days, people are very fond of claiming that they study yoga or teach yoga. But what are they really teaching? Yoga has eight steps. Yama, Niyama, Asana, Pranayama, Pratyahara, Dharana, Dhyana, and Samadhi. But people are only studying Asana. They're not following Yama and Niyama because the very first instruction of Yama is accept a guru. People refuse to accept guru. So they study a little Asana. But what's the purpose of asana? To sit in meditation. And dharana, withdraw the senses. Dhyana, concentrate the mind. And samadhi. But nobody's teaching samadhi. Nobody's learning samadhi. Nobody's experiencing samadhi. Huh? But I've been in samadhi since 1984. <laughs> People don't get it. And the reason is the Satguru and the Upas Guru. Satguru is Jupiter. And in my birth chart, Jupiter is in the ninth house of religion in the sign, water sign of Scorpio. And he's there with Ketu, which is one of the Moksha Karakas, the signs of liberation. I have four Moksha Karakas in my chart. Not to go too deeply into it. But then there's Saturn. Saturn is the Upas Guru. And he's over in the fifth house, retrograde. Huh? And that is casting a shadow on the whole chart. It means that the very people who should be uh, on, at my back, supporting and protecting me, instead they turn on me and cheat me 
and certainly we've seen this happen on this channel. The very people who should be the most staunchest supporters huh, and should be serving and protecting me or turn against me and argue with me and, and find fault with me for presenting the teachings as they really are. So this is the story of my life, basically. Even in my family when I was growing up, my family cheated me out of my inheritance from my grandfather. It was a whole big game. It was ugly, it was horrible, very sinful. And because of that, they suffered very much. I had to leave. The day I turned 18, I walked out of that house and never came back. So this is the way it's gone with me my whole life. The very people who should be on my side and supporting and protecting me become my enemies and cheat me. So this is actually to protect me because if I had a big organization, I've had a big organization. I've had a number of disciples. Huh? I've had like big money flowing in and all of that. I've been there, I've done that, and I got the scars to prove it. <laughs> that this is a uh, distraction. This is a big, big uh, distraction because the people who come to live in an ashram just want a, an easy place to hang out where they can make a show of spiritual practice and then, you know, boast to their friends that they have a guru and this and that. And it's basically useless. All my so-called disciples cheated me, betrayed me, turned their backs on me, cut me off, stopped to listen to me just because I didn't agree with their understanding, or I should say misunderstanding of the spiritual path. And they wouldn't even give me a chance to explain, or actually I did explain in classes over months and months, but they didn't listen. So they missed. And the same is going on now on this channel. So, you know, okay, since 1984, it's been 35 years. For 35 years, I've been trying to reach out one way or another to find people that I could help advance spiritually. And they just haven't showed up, or if they showed up, they didn't listen to me. So, okay, 35 years, that's enough. This channel, or actually my, my public teaching on the internet, has been going on since 2005. That's 14 years. That's two complete seven-year cycles. Just like since 1984 when I got enlightened, that's been five complete seven-year cycles. This body has been completely regenerated seven times since that happened. And each time it gets better and better. <laughs> and I'm really enjoying life now. But, except for this one thing, I can't find anybody reliable to partner with, to teach, to live with, you know? I, all the spiritual organizations are corrupt, including the one that I started. And the reason they're corrupt is that a spiritual organization is a perfect front for any kind of clandestine activity. And so they get targeted and penetrated and corrupted from within. And this is going on everywhere as far as I've seen. So I'm leaving Tiruvannamalai. I, I'm either I sold or gave away almost everything. You hear the, the room is echoing because it's so empty. <laughs> There's nothing in it but a chair. <laughs> so... I'm hitting the road, going on pilgrimage, visiting the places of the mother, and I'm giving up this video presentation. I'm going to leave the videos online, and I'm going to leave the comments that are already there, but I'm not going to be checking the comments very often. I'm not, and I really don't care anymore. 
because it's been seen now over so many years that everybody that comes forward is a cheater. So I'm not interested in being cheated. I've done my thing. I said everything that has to be said and actually more. I've given so many secrets and I was just about to start this series on the Matrika, which is the ultimate secret in a lot of ways. But the behavior of the viewers of this channel is so discouraging that I'm not going to continue with it. I'm just going to drop it. So I got my train tickets. Uh, the house is going away at the end of the month and I'm free. So good luck. I wish the best for all of you, even though most of you don't deserve it. And uh, I hope that in time you get to see the error of your ways and how you have been so offensive and such rascals and that you come to the right path. But it's too late for me to help you. So you're going to have to find somebody else. Aung Tatsat. Aung Shakti Aung.